Hello everybody and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy if you're just joining me for the first time and uh, I'm going to be your host for the evening. For the rest of you guys and girls who are used to coming here uh, when we do have a class, um, uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, tonight we're going to do a Q&A uh, so you guys and girls can ask questions in the chat. Uh, I'm going to put a question there uh, with an example of what I'd like to see. If you could put a couple of question marks in front of your question, that way I can identify them as questions for me. That would be great. I would appreciate that and uh, it'll make things easier. While we do that, while I go through and answer your questions and stuff, I'm going to be working on some designs and kind of getting some things ready for some 4th of July projects uh, that are going to be uh, available on the uh, Build It TV website. And um, I, uh, I'm going to kind of be working on those and all that good stuff. Um, so, that being said, let's jump right on into it. Uh, hopefully you're all doing well. If you see me rubbing my arm, I injured my arm the other day. And uh, I've got shooting pains going all the way through to my fingertips. So uh, it's just irritating as all be it. Um, the uh, channel that I'm on is on channel three. So let me get over there and we'll jump right into everything. Hopefully you're all doing well. And uh, it's good to see you again. Um, we'll get right into it. Let's see here. And let's throw me down here. All right, down in the corner. How you doing? All right, so uh, be sure, like I said, to throw a couple of question marks in front of your questions. Uh, ask away. I'll do my best to answer them. Tonight is going to be all about uh, answering your questions and stuff. But um, we'll... Uh, uh, I'll do my best to answer uh, your questions and everything if I can. But in the meantime, I'm going to be working on uh, some designs that uh, we've got some 4th of July projects. You know, 4th of July is just right around the corner, uh, but there's still plenty of time to make some things for that uh, day. And uh, I've got some porch signs and stuff. It's kind of, uh, we're going to kind of recap on some projects from last year, uh, but uh, we're going to also work on uh, some new stuff for this year and um, and everything so uh, what I have on the screen right now is a uh, three-dimensional model of kind of a torn wavy flag and um, that's one of the model files in this pack uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is I want to add some text over here kind of for 4th of July and uh, let's uh, got some stuff kind of already written out I'm gonna go a few couple of ways uh, to you know just kind of see what fits and everything but um, uh, hey Ronnie how are you doing bud it's good to see you too um, yeah I've been kind of uh, uh, trying to get things done and and uh, trying to uh, work through some things uh, to uh, get back on track and stuff. We're we're slowly but surely working towards it. Um, all right. So now I have a 3D model. I'm going to be doing some text on the right side here in this flat opening. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we can make this model as well. Just to, for those of you that have Aspire and are kind of interested in learning how to model, we're going to do that at the end of the class, towards the end of the class. We're going to create a model uh, similar to this and uh, show you how you could do something like that. Uh, if you don't have Aspire and all, there's a model like this that will be available uh, to you. But um, I've got it uh, imported in here. And... What I'd like to do is I'm going to open up the text box and I'm going to try to get the text laid out 
over here on the right side and I'm gonna so I can see where my little crack is in the that little split in the flag I'm gonna right click on this model and I'm gonna go down uh, first of all let me select let me get out of the text box and do this uh, I'm gonna right click and go down to object properties and I'm gonna turn the fading off what this will do is this will when I'm whether I'm clicked on the flag or not it's still gonna stay that dark gray scale so I can see everything if I kept the fading uh, as it was uh, when I'm clicked on it I'll be able to see it when I'm clicked off of it it's kind of faded out right so I don't want that to occur so I'm just going to right click and go object properties and just turn that bitmap fading off that way it stays dark and I can kind of see where I'm laying things out uh, and stuff. Um, and so the first one, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a, bear with me a second. Uh, Let me see here. I'm gonna do a little bit of a tribute to old Lee Greenwood on the first one, and then we're gonna to get to JJ's very first question. So uh, let's uh, let's kind of see if we can lay this out a bit. A little uh, tribute to old Lee Greenwood here. So. Let's go into our text box and let's paste this in here. And uh, let's go to about one inch tall on the text. Let's get it. I'm going to drag it over to this general area. And then I'm going to start kind of, uh, let's go a little bit smaller, uh, 0.75. And let's see here. Now I gotta lay it out. Let's see if we can get it laid out a bit. Now it's gonna look dark uh, in everything where I'm working uh, because of the black, the gray and the, the pink and everything. Um, but hopefully you can see that. You're not gonna be able to read the words very clearly until you know we kind of get off of the grayscale and I turn the fading back on but uh, let's see if we can uh, kind of get it laid out and uh, while I'm laying it out we're gonna start off with uh, JJ's first question let me get um, this next line done and I won't forget the men who died, comma, enter, there you go. I'm going to have to do a little bit of distorting in just a moment. We'll see about that. All right, let's, uh, let's go to file and save as. Save early, save often, so we don't uh, lose anything. And I'm just going to boo uh, uh, proud to be. American. All right. Save that. All right. Let's look at JJ's first question here. Uh, JJ says, uh, did a pocket cut with raised letterings in it. Uh, the internal corners uh, did not cut sharp, even though the Vetric carve uh, had the cut in the toolpath. Any ideas of the cause? So, Let's come over here and create a new layer for a moment. And let's close out of this. Okay. And so if I have a pocket rectangle here, let's go square corners on that. And we'll just Come in and throw some text in here. Hello world. We'll just go with a simple aerial. Alright, 
let's fix world. Okay. So basically what uh, we've got here is we're doing a V-carve tool path. Uh, we're going to start at zero. I'll do a pocket depth of an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure what you had there, JJ, but I'm just going to go an eighth of an inch. With a 60 degree V bit, I'll go with an uh, eighth of an inch end mill for now. And we're going to calculate that as a raster cut, cutting with the grain versus round and around against the grain. It'll be a little bit cleaner cut for us. Um, so, what JJ is saying is uh, let's preview this tool path here. Now, when we come in and carve this, the pocket cut is going to do a round cut because it's the end mill, the eighth inch end mill. Uh, right now it's got a 16th of an inch radius and everything. Um, when that V cut comes in, when that V bit comes in, not only is it going to do the decorative edges around the letter, but it also should clean up that corner. So uh, when we clean up that, it should come in and clean up this corner here. Now, depending on uh, JJ, I don't know what machine you have and everything, but uh, if you're not getting square sharp corners from that V bit and everything, you might want to check your blend tolerance. Uh, in your controller software to make sure that the blend uh, uh, isn't basically the look ahead and how sharply it turns a corner and stuff. Um, it might be rounding off your corners or some corners versus others instead of uh, going kind of a sharp degree. You kind of want your uh, blend angle to be about 90 degrees uh, and you want your um, blend tolerance to be about 10 thousandths of an inch if your software allows you to make those adjustments and changes in the controller software if you're not getting sharp corners because your end mill is going to create round corners uh, for the raised letters and let's hope that you did it as a v carve and not a pocket cut because if you did it as a pocket cut then it's going to be round corners. It's not going to be sharp corners because it's a round bit. So you want to do it as a V carve cut with a flat depth that combines a pocket cut and a V carve cut. That end mill is going to do all the flat work and everything. And the V bit's going to come and do all the decorative sharp edges and all that stuff. If you did it as a straight pocket cut, then you're going to have round corners. There's no change in that it has nothing to do with the blend tolerance. Um, do it as a V carve cut with a flat depth and combine that pocket with the V bit. Uh, and uh, that'll give you your sharp corners. Let me know if any of that answered your question, JJ. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Camaro uh, says, uh, can you explain how to do a radius edge on a part like a cabinet door? Uh, you have said in the past that uh, you must offset the bit. My bit comes to a point uh, with no shaft or bearing. Okay. So basically, let's use this same uh, rectangle as an example here. And what I'm going to do is I'll do a profile cut to cut it out uh, for you, uh, Camaro, so we can kind of just see that, that piece. Uh, so let's go with a profile cut. I'm going to go all the way through the material with a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. And we're going to... Um, cut that piece out okay so we just have this now on that same profile line I'm going to do a round over okay I'm gonna use my round over bit I'm so it's gonna be a profile cut and the round over bit that I'm gonna use in this example is a white side SC 50 now let me draw this bit out for you uh, the profile of it so you can see it and then we'll talk about the step over and pass depth and everything so you can you, you can know what the step over is. So let me draw this really quickly. Uh, we're going to take a doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, rectangle and it's going to be 3 8 0.375 and uh, the height is going to be uh, we'll just go 0 0.5 for now and it's going to have an internal radius of 0.125 and we'll click apply. Let's zoom into that. All right, let's go into node editing and let's cut the vector here and right here in this middle line and also on this edge right here. We're going to cut that. 
let's get rid of this because when we're drawing a profile to add to our tool database, we draw the right side of it. Now on that white side, uh, 2050 uh, eighth inch roundover bit, uh, the stem here is a quarter inch long. So I'm gonna move this down, move relative down an other eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna join these two with a straight line. All right, and that's gonna be the right half of my bit. Now, let's go ahead and mirror this for a moment. We'll just uh, make a mirror copy and flip it to the left. There we go. All right, so let's say that we have a roundover bit here, and now let's take our board, our piece of material, and uh, let's go square corners on that. All right, now let's group this together for a moment. Okay, right now, if we did a profile cut on the outside right of the line, on the outside right of the line, uh, the outside of the bit would be up against that edge on that outside right. We need to step over the distance to where this inside of this cutter is on that edge. So for us, uh, that distance is an eighth of an inch, this eighth inch roundover. So we're going to, if I were to measure from here to here, uh, we have an eighth of an inch. So that's gonna be a negative step over. We need to cross the line. So it's gonna be a step over of negative eighth of an inch to go across the line. Uh, so that will bring the bit over to that cutter. Now we have to bring it down. Now from the, from zero, the top of the board basically, uh, from the bottom of the bit to the bottom, or the top of the round over, should I say, that's a quarter of an inch. I'll measure it just to show you guys. Uh, let's go here and go vertical. From this point to this point, it's a quarter of an inch, okay? So my cut depth is going to be a quarter of an inch. So let's go ahead and bring this down a quarter of an inch and bring it over an eighth of an inch, and that's gonna create that round over cut, right? So knowing that, let's go over to our rectangle here, and we're gonna do a profile cut a quarter of an inch deep, and our outside right of the line, and we're gonna do an offset of allowance of negative 0.125. Now these numbers would change depending on if it's a half inch radius, quarter inch radius, eighth inch radius, whatever your, you know, your bit is, you, you know, measure your bit and all, and those numbers will change accordingly. So we're gonna calculate this tool path. And if we come over and look at this in a solid view, okay, you can see that eighth inch step over where that bit's gonna step over here and then it's gonna come down to that, uh, that top of that bit. And so if we take a good look at this and preview that visible tool path, uh, we'll get that round over. Now, you see what just happened there? That's not supposed to happen. So. Let's go figure out what in the world just happened there. Um, I got to add in my bit. I used a quarter inch end mill instead of the round over bit, right? So let's go select. Let's go to our uh, do, 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 do. Uh, white side 2050. And let's recalculate that bad boy. Let's reset that preview and preview these two tool paths again. We'll preview the cutout first, preview that first. Let's get rid of that so we can zoom into this corner again. And let's make it look like it was actually supposed to look the first time around. Okay, so it creates that eighth inch round over there. All right, so Camaro, you wanna pass depth to the top of the radius, that's your pass depth. And you should, you know, probably it'll probably do it in one pass, most likely, uh, you know, just like if you were doing a round over on a router table. Uh, and then your step over, you're gonna be going from the outside right side of that bit to the inside of that round over cut, whatever that offset is for your particular bit. In my case, this eighth, it's an eighth of an inch. So that's a negative offset of an eighth of an inch to get it over to that edge. So it comes in and, uh, you know, cuts that round over to create that round over cut. Right? So let me know, Camaro, if that answered your question. Um, let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> K 
Kevin Wilkerson, could you do text in a box to make the box the size of the ripped area and then adjust? You could. Uh, so the Kevin Wilkerson's question is regarding the, uh, coming back to the flag here, uh, could I kind of draw out a box and have the text follow that, uh, you know, that box and everything? And I could, but now that might, that rip and that tear is kind of at an angle here. Uh, if I do the text in a box, it's going to create it in a rectangular box. It's not going to count that slant and everything. That is the distort tool, right? So I could distort the text, uh, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, and within a bounding box, I could distort it so it kind of flows with that a bit and everything. Um, and all. Uh, okay. So uh, to, just to do a follow-up, JJ uh, says uh, that's it. He used a pocket cut instead of the V-card with a flat depth, which combines the V-bit and the pocket. That gives you those nice sharp corners, you know, on that pocket. Uh, and uh, Camaro said that it did answer his question. So great. Hey, we're on a roll. Uh, all right. Let's, um, let's get back to this really quickly here. Now, basically, uh, what Kevin is asking is, hey, can you create kind of a virtual box? In this case, we'll just kind of do it here. Okay. And uh, let me do that. Uh, let me get rid of this layer two hello text stuff. Hello world stuff. Delete. And there's another router bit piece right there. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So can we create a bounding box? And let me move this text here for a minute. Could we create a box and use the text in a box tool here? And um, let's uh, copy and paste, okay, to have it kind of fit within that box. Now, I still want to kind of uh, separate these lines out. So um, we're going to, I got it uh, centered inside this box. Uh, right now, normal margins, no stretching uh, as of as of yet. Uh, so it's kind of restricting to here. Uh, as I start to um, move these lines down and everything, um, I gladly stand up. Next to you in the Ben Hur still today. There ain't no doubt. I love this land. God bless the USA. Now, let's make that. Uh, let's see if we can. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, let's go no margins on this box to kind of get it to uh, stretch out some. And that'll kind of get us somewhat close. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start getting it laid out here. Okay. I'm going to move it over to the right a bit. Now, that box, Kevin, kind of just, it helped me kind of get it sized, you know, uh, automatically sized to that area. But I still had to kind of stretch it, you know, to, to kind of fit. But now I'm gonna take that text and let's get out of that rectangle. Let's get rid of that rectangle. And I'm actually gonna distort the text. Now I could, I could break the text up into individual lines so that I'm working with one line at a time, right? To kind of uh, get things uh, to where they fit. You know, and it's it would be nice if I also used, uh, you know, for some of the key punch words and all, I might use different fonts or what have you. But um, uh, for right now, I could size those sentences up or down, you know, so they kind of uh, fit and everything. But let's back off on that for a second and get back to where we were for a minute. Um, I want to get back to it being one group, not broken into individual lines, because I could very well just uh, come in here and use the distort. Now, remember, 
before I distort this in a bounding box, I want to make sure that my spelling is correct and that I'm using the font that I want to use. In this case, I'm actually not using the font that I want to use. So let me go back and fix the font. I'd like to have it a little bit of a kind of a scripty type font. Um, and that is going to be for me the, it's in the G's, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Grand Avenue, Grand Adventure, Grand Adventure. Okay, that's the font I want to use. Um, and now I got the font. My spelling is correct. Uh, in spell check, this uh, version 11 has spell check. Thank goodness. Uh, but version 11 has spell check. I have, oh, I do have one red line. Uh, let me see what the, uh, it's going to give me some options here on the spell check let's see there is a comma where there shouldn't have been there an apostrophe there was an apostrophe where there shouldn't have been an apostrophe uh, I am I'm good with that okay so spelling and font, check, check, all done. Uh, let's go ahead and weld this font together uh, to get rid of the overlap of the lines. And I'm just gonna replace it. Okay, again, I know it's dark because of that dark background. Let me, I can see, let, let me go into this model here and let me turn the fading down just a little bit. That's good. That way, we, that way y'all can see that maybe a little bit better. Okay. Now back to what I was talking about. Let's go ahead and uh, select this. I'm going to group it all together because I just welded it uh, and that created a, uh, a, a, it converted it to curves, a, a vector. Uh, so it welded all those overlaps and everything's together, everything together. But um, let's go into the distort tool and I'm gonna distort it inside of a bounding box. And that's gonna stick this text in a box. And now I'm gonna distort that box to my liking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these two nodes up. Kinda right there. Uh, I'm gonna bring these two nodes down. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. That looks good. Um, I'll center it in just a moment, but now I'm going to take this node. Let's get back in there. And I'm going to kind of pull that in. And I'm going to take this node up here and kind of pull that in. And I'm going to kind of, uh, on my line and everything, I'm going to kind of get somewhat close to that, to where it is inside of that crack. Okay, so basically it's kind of distorting that text, so it kind of just flows a little bit in, uh, in inward and everything uh, for that uh, text to fit there. Cool beans. Uh, now I want to center it uh, up and down on my material. And it is centered, so that's good. Okay. Now, oh, man, if it was my left arm, I'd worry that I was having a heart attack or something, but it's my right arm. I pulled a muscle. Man, it hurts. Okay. Uh, I didn't pull a muscle. I pinched a nerve. That's what it is. All right. So... Let's create some tool paths and see how we did, and then we'll get to um, we'll get to Brooks' question next. All right. So first, 
let's get rid of all these other tool paths. Delete. Let's try that again. Delete all. There we go. All right, so let's start off with our flag. Uh, we're gonna go into our material setup and we're gonna make sure that our flag, you know, fits within our model, our material, and it's a three quarter inch board, so yes, it does. Um, we're gonna go with a 3D rough cut. Uh, I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill, it's fine for this. I'm gonna use the uh, material as the boundary, no boundary offset. Uh, machining allowance 40 thousandths is good for me Z level raster and zero raster angle let's calculate that and we'll create that kind of rough cut while we look at Brooks question um, no that's calculating so Brooks says uh, I milled some acrylic with a 0.25 ball nose and it blow up on me uh, it blew up on me haha <laughs> changed to an O flute bit but had some chipping any thoughts or suggestion well number one brooks answered this question for me was it cast acrylic or extruded acrylic uh such as plexiglass lexan or extruded acrylic right you know extruded acrylic sheets uh, or was it cast acrylic because extruded acrylic is going to chip break melt you know, uh, and uh, you don't really want to carve or cut extruded acrylics or plastics. I mean, you can. Um, and uh, O flute bit is ideal for that situation and stuff. You just got to control that uh, feed rate, RPMs and everything of that bit. Um, and, uh, but uh, if it's cast acrylic, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the term blew up on me means uh, like like exploded uh, and all that uh, I'm not sure how a ball nose bit could cause that to happen because the ball nose bit is depending on what you were doing uh, the ball nose bit is just cutting on the tip of the bit so I'm not sure exactly what uh, um, uh, extruded so your best guess is extruded so number one that would be where your critical failure part is going to be is you want cast acrylic Extruded acrylics like plexiglass, Lexan, and, and extruded acrylic sheeting and stuff, uh, those are going to be more brittle uh, material. Uh, you're going to have a tendency to melt, chip, break, crack, split. Uh, and, and, you know, you're going to have to babysit that more than you would cast acrylic. Cast acrylic will carve or engrave with a diamond bit, a ball nose bit, if you're doing kind of a 3D carving in it, if you're doing edgelet signs uh, or V-bit and everything. It cuts much better. Uh, much cleaner and everything. So my best guess is uh, that uh, switch to not guess, but my 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 best advice would be to switch to a cast acrylic uh, and uh, give it a go again. Okay. Um, yeah, the acrylic cylinder shatters. So you were cutting kind of a cylinder, and if it, if it, if, it, if it's extruded, uh, it's going to be super brittle. So yeah, I could see that thing just just breaking apart right all right let's preview this uh, visible toolpath and uh, this is the rough cut of this flag my fingers are numb I gotta go get that checked out so I don't get nerve damage on the end of my hand that would suck but um, so we're going to, we're doing basically kind of a rough cut and I could use I could use a larger end mill I could use multiple end mills uh, uh, um, you know, to, to achieve this, but I'm just using a quarter inch end mill. So let it do its thing. Um, and it's just going to cut down to its, uh, cut those waves and all that rough cut. A few more passes and it'll be there. <clears throat> uh, Bob Frills, uh, question uh says uh could you could ha could you have distorted the text between two curves uh by selecting the vector um that the uh the vector for the flag break and the vector for the right side uh sure yeah if uh if that flag break vector was there um if we look at the 2d view uh there's no vector here right uh but um 
if there were a vector there or if we created a vector we could use that we could use the right side we could draw a vector down the right side and we could distort between those two lines absolutely yes yes the distort tool will do that uh, an example of that um, let me take this and I'm gonna pull it over here for a minute and then I'm gonna hold the uh, control key down and make a copy of it and I'm gonna convert that to curves to break it out of the current distortion that it's in and uh, let's take let's see if I can trace that line so we got a little bit of a little bit of a delay give me just a second while things catch up to themselves there we go all right uh, let's undo this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flag into the trace bitmap tool and I'm gonna turn the fading off and I'm gonna bring this back I don't know if I'll be able to do that with that wave yeah yeah I'm not gonna be able to get it with that wave so let's uh, let's go a different route with that let's just go in here and use the curve tool and I'll just basically kind of wing it okay spacebar to finish uh, let's take our line tool and we'll just draw a line down this right side okay now let's take this text here okay we've got our text selected and go into our distort tool now we're going to go between two curves now notice i have an x in here that uh you know the, the curves aren't selected right i've got the text selected but not the curves uh so we're going to go ahead and select uh this one first and then this one second and i should get a green check mark saying hey everything's okay we're good to go right uh and then we'll go ahead and apply that and of course it has rotated that bad boy 90 degrees cool it worked but it rotated at 90 degrees um because of the simple fact of it's looking for a top line and a bottom line right so let's see if we can let's see The second line is the line that's selected. Da, 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 da. All right, let's undo that. Create my top line here. My bottom line here. Now I know for a fact if I select this, this top, oop, top line and bottom line and apply that, that will do nothing. What did we do? Oh, it would help if I chose the right option. Let's do that one more time. Uh, we're going to go between two curves. Uh, let me get out of note editing mode. Lord of mercy. We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. All right. Select that. Uh, hold down the shift key. Select that and that. And between two lines, click apply. And of course, it's upside down. So I need to select my bottom line first. Control Z to undo. Let's select that bottom line first. Okay. 
and so that would kind of pull it that way. We couldn't do the side to side, Frank or Bob. Uh, we couldn't do the side to side because it's looking for a top and a bottom line, distorting between two lines, uh, top and bottom. So if we do side to side, it's going to rotate everything 90 degrees. Um, so we'd have to select a top vector and a bottom vector, and we can somewhat get it uh, by doing it that way. But by doing it in a bounding box, we can be a little bit more creative with our curves and stuff. You know, the way we had it the first time around. So by having it in our bounding box, in my, when I'm in my distort uh, mode here, and I'll edit that envelope, um, I could, if I, I mean, I could add points in anywhere, and I could pull those points uh, to get that text to kind of contour and flow you know so it has that flow and everything um, and all so uh, let me add a point here pull that point in a bit pull this in a bit you know and uh, you know if I really wanted it to kind of flow with that I just want it on that side right so I don't, I don't need it to be, you know, it doesn't have to follow that crack perfectly. I just want it to contour in there well. You know what I mean? So, okay. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, we got our 3D rough cut done. Let's go ahead and create our 3D finish cut. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to, what do I got here? I got an eighth inch and a... 16th inch. Let me see what I got there. Uh, tip. Well, three, one, two, five. Let me get rid of this one. Let's remove that. Let me select my eighth inch tapered ball nose. Okay. Uh, I got, I'm bringing the 16th into the mix uh, just for around the stars and stuff. Give it a little bit, uh, you know, better around the stars and all. And so let's go ahead and calculate that toolpath. All right, so Bob, hopefully you understand that, you know, the distort tool lets us distort within a bounding box, which we can contour that box any way we want. It lets us distort on a single line or between two lines. And because it's between two lines, it's going to be a bottom line and a top line. It won't be a left or a right line, you know, side to side like that. So hopefully you get that and understand, and uh, we're good to go there. Uh, yep, great questions, guys and girls. Uh, uh, keep asking. Uh, this is going to take just a moment to calculate. Now, while that's calculating, I want to uh, pop open uh, an existing, another uh, project. Um from the 4th of July projects, we're going to do uh, some different porch signs and stuff. So I've got a variety of signs here. I have uh, the uh, America, 1776 established. Uh, I've got a welcome sign with the star for the O and the little stripes. And we've got let freedom ring, right? So. Uh, if we were to look at these, um, and the tool paths are already kind of created. Of course, don't ever take a tool path for granted. Change it to fit your needs and stuff. But um, if we were to take a look at, let's do this one. preview those visible tool paths. Okay, so that would be let freedom ring. Uh, we can reset that. Let's look at the alternative of that. Uh, 
quickly view the visible tool pass. What I'm doing here is just making sure that these files are good and ready to go. Um, so there's alternative number two to let freedom ring. Uh, we've got, we should have our All right, let's turn that off and preview that toolpath. Sweet, and uh, let's give that a color. There we go. And these uh, boards here, um, they are 36 inches tall, 11 and a quarter inch wide, so one by 12, 36 inches. And they're little port signs that would, you know, sit on a porch, or you could put a little stand or something where, you know, some some kind of where it uh, hangs out and everything. Um, speaking of that, let me show you. Here's a neat little idea. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Now, I didn't make this sign. Uh, of course, you know, I'm a carver. Could have made it, but I went and we bought it and everything. Uh, just a little sign that sits uh, in our living room by the fireplace and all. But uh, the reason why I got it was I really liked the back of this. Um, this little, uh, almost in a sense, kind of like uh, those yard sign type stakes. Uh, it's just, it's literally just uh, tubing, a uh, little quarter inch copper tubing probably could be soldered together type of thing a uh, little rope uh, soldered to some hinges up here and it creates a nice little stand uh, and everything and it just kind of sits in front of our fireplace and stuff but uh, I liked that little stand and I thought you know hey I could incorporate something like that uh, with my porch signs or something you know uh, and it could be made out of wood you know but uh, I could, you know, probably solder some copper together or, you know, what have you, uh, that way as well. Interesting stuff. All right, let's look at the last sign and then we'll move on. Um, let's see here. Let's reset that. And preview that visible tool pad. Now, someone asked the question, what is the name of the font for the American sign? Um, let's uh, close out of this. And I believe that is IFC Railroad. IFC Railroad. Should be able to find it on defont.com. Defont.com. Okay, let's go back to our uh, our our toolpath is still calculating. Uh, it's working. It's wrapping up on its final one right final pass right now. I can see that. Um, let's see here. Uh, hey Tim, welcome from Central Indiana. How you doing, bud? All right. All right, let's preview that uh, visible toolpath there to do that uh, finish cut. And it's going to take just a second. I've got the quality, the resolution turned up quite a bit uh, on that. Uh, so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, we'll just let it do its thing. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, go ahead and ask them for sure. In desperate need of a haircut, guys. Hey, 
I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, there are hundreds of new models, uh, frames, clocks, animals, religion, uh, flags, um, all kinds of stuff on builditv.com. Uh, go check it out. And this package, uh, this 4th of July pack is going to be available for sale as well. Don't know how much it's going to be uh, discounted to or, or and all that, but uh, it's going to be a probably most likely a discounted price because the 4th of July is just right around the corner and I want to encourage you guys and girls to go buy it because it puts food on the table, right? So it's the best way to support this channel to keep these classes free, um, you know, because like, for instance, uh, the build of the Hollywood mirror that we did last week and everything. I've got to be able to buy materials and stuff for that to do those build projects and all. And uh, your support uh, for the channel, uh, they buying these models and all, that money goes towards buying materials and stuff and all. and keeps this thing going and everything, uh, you know. So help a feller out. Go buy some models. Uh, and uh, these 4th of July packs will be here as well. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and create. Now, the, the difference uh, when we create the V-Carve toolpath here, um, we're going to, uh, no flat depth on this, no end mill needed, just a 60 degree V-bit's gonna be fine, but we need to project it. It's very important that we project this 2D toolpath onto the 3D model because this model has waves in it and we need the text to follow those waves and that, those curves and contours and things. So if we didn't do that, it would be a, let me deselect these vectors here. Do, 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 do. Uh, it would, uh, we would be hitting and missing in some places. You'd have some words somewhere, some words nowhere, right? Uh, so, and no words nowhere. Uh, but uh, let's calculate this projected onto the 3D model. We'll calculate that toolpath. And uh, 60 will be good for this one. I don't think it's, it's not small enough that it needs a 22 and all 60 will be excellent. And uh, yeah, you're, Ronnie, you're gonna see that because we're gonna create a, a flag here in just a second. Uh, that's gonna be how we end the night. We're gonna make a three dimensional flag in Aspire software for those of you that are interested. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. Cool beans. And uh, that would be uh, that flag project and all that. Um, the text, whatever, you know, color, uh, you know, it would be in. But, uh, and then, of course, I'd probably go through and paint the flag, which I can't kind of simulate right now. But uh, that would be one. Uh, I've got three different quotes. Uh, they would kind of be the same thing. I've got a quote that says, uh, uh, those who want our independence believe liberty to be the secret of happiness. With freedom comes responsibility. Where liberty dwells, there is my country. We must be free, not because we claim freedom, but because we practice it, right? So that could be one. Uh, today, let us take some time to value our nation and never forget the sacrifices. That could be another. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Lee Greenwood here. Uh, and I'm proud to be an American lyric, right? So, whatever. Whatever floats your boat could be in there. Uh, it could be the Constitution. could be the Independence. You know, whatever. Declaration of Independence. All kinds of stuff. You know, I just went kind of simple here. All right. Let's... Uh, Let's have a little bit of fun and let's make a flag. Um, so in the, we're gonna move over to Aspire here and those signs are great, wonderful, so I don't need to do anything with them. And they're available in, uh, in uh, VCAR versions and desktop and all that as well. Uh, I'm gonna create a new file here and this file is going to be uh, 38 by 20 point um, 03125 that'll be good and I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch that'll be fine 
and I'm going to click OK. All right. Now, I'm going to import some vectors to help me create uh, this flag. Number one is I'm going to import uh, some vectors uh, that uh, we're going to... Um, I don't think they're in here. They are going to be called... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Flag proportions. All right, I need the DXF file is fine. Let's go ahead and grab that. All right, now, these files, I'll include these in the pack too. These are perfectly sized flags, both the uh, 1776 or you know Betsy Ross flag uh, and then today's constitutional flag. Uh, they're both, the aspect ratios are sized according to the constitution. They're perfectly drawn. Uh, the vectors are already there. So uh, that makes life much easy, uh, this, all that good stuff. So I'm going to center that onto the material. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, this particular uh, flag, I need to change the size. It's 20.3125, not 03125. So let's go back in there and change that. Point three one three. I'll just round it up. <clears throat> Beautiful. And let's center that onto the material. Great. Okay. So half the battle already done. Now, all the stripes are drawn on here. I don't need the red stripes. I only need the white stripes. Uh, so. Um, the uh, I'm gonna get rid of the red stripes. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get rid of them. I'm just gonna throw them on a different layer. So I'm gonna select every other one. I'm holding that shift key down while I select every other stripe, and I'm going to move that to a new layer and call it red stripes. And I'm gonna make that layer invisible, and click OK. OK, cool beans. All right, let's go in and uh, we're going to go into our modeling tools. We're going to start creating our shapes. And the first shape, I got to slap myself because the nerve is driving me crazy. Um, I need to put some ice on it. Uh, the first shape is going that I'm going to shape is uh, we're going to create the base of this. So let's split the view so we can see things in a split view here. All right, so that rectangle selected, that's gonna be my base. And for my base, I'm gonna go, uh, we'll go a half inch. Let me see, half. Yeah, we'll go a half inch thick, that'll be good. I'll change it if I need to, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and make our foundation, okay? So that's gonna be our foundation here. All right, and then we're going to create a new component. Uh, from here, let's go ahead and build up our stars. Now your stars, of course, you could go down or up. I like building them up and we're gonna build those up um, and we're gonna give them a um, slight bit of a peak to them. Um, they could, we could do flat, uh, flat stars. Uh, it all depends on what you want. Uh, but I'm gonna go a quarter inch tall. Okay, and I'm going to add some draft to those in just a little bit. I'll add some draft to those to uh, give them nice angles on their walls and stuff. Um, and let's start a new component. Now the stripes, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, stripe material. So that's going to be a flat, and we're going to go down um, an eighth of an inch. One, one two, five, that's good. Oh my God, my arm is killing me. 0.125. And we're going to subtract from our base. Okay, we're going to click apply to apply that. And that's going to give us our base here. Okay. Now, on the stars, let's go back to let's go back to the stars. 
I went a quarter inch tall. I don't want to go that tall. I want to go on the stars. I'll reselect those. And I want to go into their properties and I'm going to bring that size down. I want to go, um, I want to go, just an eighth of an inch, I think. Let me see here. Yeah. All right. Now, on that, I'm going to turn off uh, the... I'm not going to turn off anything. I'm going to create a new level. Guys and girls with me, I'm going to create a new level. Because uh, I want to keep, these are my masters, these three shapes here, my base, the stripes, and the stars. Those are my masters. I don't want to do anything with them. So I'm going to create a new level. And I'm going to take these three objects. I'm going to hold down that control key and I'm going to drag a copy into that new level. And I'm going to turn off the original. So those are kind of my originals. They're intact. I'm going to turn them off. So I'm just working in this level here. And uh, I want to go ahead and add a draft to my stripes. They're going to give a slight draft uh, to the uh, stripes. You don't have to, but I want to. And I want to go with a, uh, a 30 degree draft is going to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Now, my first mistake when I built this was I should have turned up my resolution, my modeling resolution. I should have turned that up much higher than the uh, 8,000 pixels uh, that I was using, uh, that I'm using in here. Um, I should have turned that up to the 20,000. Anytime I'm building a model, I want a, I want a higher resolution, uh, you know, the highest resolution possible. But uh, we got our draft there. So that kind of gives us a nice angle on our stars and all, and even on the inside of our stripes, a nice little 30 degree angle there. Uh, gives it just kind of a nice, clean look. Now, let's add some wave to this. Um, let's see here. We have a question before we go to the next thing. Uh, Jim Starn says, can you touch on diamond drag etching with the 2440, turning the spindle off? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you have, James, uh, most likely you have a water-cooled spindle if you're asking about it, because of course, if you had a router, you can just switch the router off, right? Let me answer this question because this is an important question that everybody that has a 2440 with a water-cooled spindle should know. But uh, let me minimize this real quick. And, you know, in your software, you have your 2440 V2 mill mode, your 2440 V2 fourth axis mode, your pick laser mode and things like that. Uh, and what we need to do is we are going to go into the uh, C drive of our computer, uh, program files, go down to planet CNC and into profiles and find that mill mode profile and right click and copy it and then right click and paste. Okay, click continue. And you're gonna get a duplicate folder that says mill mode dash copy. We're gonna go in and we're going to rename this and we're gonna call it uh, diamond drag or drag or diamond or whatever, but make sure you know exactly what the name is. Get rid of that copy. Okay, so we've created a new folder called diamond drag mode. Okay, on our desktop, we're going to create a new shortcut. <clears throat> browse 
this PC, C drive, program files, planet CNC, profiles. I'm sorry, back it up. Don't go into profiles yet. Planet CNC, Planet CNC 64. Click OK. Click Next. Call this DWC Diamond Drag Mode. And finish. So we create that shortcut, Diamond Drag Mode. It's over here, right here. Now I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go into the properties. And at the end of my target here, after the quote marks, I'm going to put my mouse, I'm going to hit a space bar, dash P, space, capital DWC 2440, underscore V2, underscore, and I'm going to type in exactly the name that I created on the folder. So diamond drag no spaces, underscore, moat. And I'm going to click apply. This way it opens up that folder for settings and everything. We're going to click OK. Now we can come into the software. We're going to go into the file menu. Go down to settings. We're going to go to general up here. and We're going to change mill mode to diamond drag mode. So that'll change it up there at the top. You can change the color background if you want. Uh, under user interface, I'll change the color background. I'll go kind of uh, orangish brown, something about like that. Okay, whatever color, uh, that's an ugly color, but you know, you get the idea, change it to whatever you want. Um, let me, uh, let me fancy that up a little bit. All right, and then now the most important thing, go down to spindle and output number six is gonna be set in there because you have a water-cooled spindle uh, and it's gonna say zero to 24,000 um, and it's gonna say probably like 15 minutes here, 15 seconds, sorry. What you want to do is you want to blank those out. So this is going to be zero. This is going to be zero. And this is going to be the three dashes, zero. We don't want the spindle turning on at all. Spindle's not even involved at this point now. You're going to click OK. And uh, that'll be your new program for when you're running your diamond drag bit. So that way your spindle doesn't turn on. OK. All right, Jim. That's it. Uh, and uh, this video will be live on Spindle TV at the end of the class. You can go back and watch it 100 times over until you get it set up right. But that's what you need to do. You're going to create a brand new window, a brand new operating system, basically, uh, for uh, this for your diamond drag mode. If you have a water-cooled spindle. If you have a router, guys and girls, on your 2440, just turn the router off. You don't need to do all this. All right? Okay. Cool beans. All right, let's go back to our flag here. Now, we're gonna create our wave on our flag. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna create uh, two guidelines, how I want my wave to flow, and I'm gonna go kind of at this angle here. And I'm going to hold down the control key and drag this over to here. That's good. All right. And that's going to be my path that my wave is going to follow. The my That's going to be my two rail sweep, if you will. Uh, now I just need to create the wave. So... All right, now I need to make sure that this wave, the height of it, uh, you know, isn't too thick or too tall because I only have a three quarter inch board, right? So, uh, okay. Oh, oops, let's try that again. 
uh, I want the width, I'm gonna uncheck this, I want the width to be 38. And I want the height to be, I'm gonna go 0 0.625. Okay, to create that. And uh, let me go into node editing. Let me pull this down just a little bit. Okay. So your wave could be dramatic, it could be extreme, it could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, you, if you had thicker material, it could be much more deeper and all that stuff. This is just a very subtle wave pattern here. Uh, we're gonna go into the modeling and we're gonna go two rail sweep. We're gonna select our drive rails here. That's gonna be our drive rails. And we're gonna select this and we're gonna scale it between the, the sections uh, with the width and we're gonna sweep it between the two spans. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click apply. Jim Starnes, uh, let me know if that answered your question. Okay. All right, so we have our wave here. Okay. On our flag. And close. <clears throat> All right. Now, the wave that I created uh, I'm going to go into the properties and I'm going to kind of uh, play with the, the, the thickness a little bit because it's, you know, still 0.907 in its high spot. Uh, I'm going to bring that down to 0.625. There we go. I don't want it too, too thin, you know, right here on the back, you know, the bottom here. But uh, that's good enough for me. For me. For me. All right, so now that I have that, okay, so we've got our uh, components. We're still in level two. Remember our star stripes and our base, our originals, they're in level one. We made a copy of them. We added the draft to that copy. So with that draft, you see where it says model with the draft, the three components, the three originals do not need to be turned on. So those can be unchecked. Okay, so because that model, when we added the draft, it recreated that model with the draft. Okay, all right, and uh, so we are good to go there. The wave goes on top of that model, of course. All right, so now I have the wave. Now, uh, I wanna create that kind of uh, split, if you will. You know, like we did, like that, that other flag and everything. Uh, I, I, I wanna create that kind of that, that, that flat spot, uh, that smooth spot, if you will. Um, and I wanna create that split so what I would do is I would basically go online and I would look up crack, <laughs> look up crack, vector, uh, or torn paper, not crack vector, I'm sorry, torn paper vector, torn paper vector and uh, go into the images <clears throat> and we have these different tears uh, in everything that we could trace we could save that image we could trace it and create the vector of it uh, and um, uh, we can use that to uh, clear out our model and all. So for this, I'm going to, um, or you could draw your own, right? If you wanted to. Uh, for this, I'm going to
I'm going to go here and I'm going to save this image. And then I'm going to go in back into the Vetric and I'm going to import that image. Now that image is currently hiding behind my model. So I'm gonna turn the model off for a second so I can grab that image. So I can move it down here. And then I'll turn my model back on. Okay, so on that image, let's zoom in to this. I'm gonna go into the trace tool. Turn the fading off, black and white. And I'm gonna kinda of Pull this up till I get kind of the line that I want. And I'm going to click on Preview, Apply, and Close. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that bitmap. And of course, everything is on that bitmap layer for the moment. Let's move that over to layer one for a second so I can turn off that bitmap. There we go. And I am only want I only want this line right here, this crack right here. So I'm going to go in and ungroup everything. Ungroup. And I'm going to delete... everything that I don't want. Uh, my mouse is being a pain in the butt right now. So I'm going to go through and delete everything I don't want, which is pretty much all those little squares and stuff. Okay. And what I want is I want this crack right here. So I'm going to go into node editing. And I'm going to cut the vector here. Go to the other side. Cut the vector there. And that's all I really want out of this. So I'm just going to get rid of everything else. so that I'm left with just this line here. Now, that line, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, so I'm gonna just hit the number zero key to rotate that. I'll probably change the angle of it or something here in just a minute. But I wanna go ahead and bring it up into uh, place. And I wanna stretch it however, I, you know, the layout wherever I want it and stuff. So I'm gonna kind of pull this down probably about like that pull this up kind of here and uh, let's give it a little bit of an angle and back it up some Doo -doo -doo -doo. looks good there okay now I'm going to draw out a straight line connecting from here past my model, straight down, line up with this end. Work with me. Okay, and I'm gonna create one closed vector. Okay, oops. 
don't be clicking everything. All right, so I wanna to go to my join tool and close that off. So now I have this boundary here, okay? With me so far? Yeah, good. Okay, now I'm gonna take my model, my selected model here, this guy, and I'm gonna select this boundary and I'm gonna clear everything inside that boundary away. Okay, I'm basically deleting it. All right, cool beans. Okie dokie. All right, now, um, I could add a little bit of base to this, uh, you know, um, give it a little bit more thickness and stuff uh, and everything. So on my shape, I'm not worried that the shape goes out past the boundaries because it's not gonna show anything that's outside of my board. Uh, I could give that a little bit of a base height. So I could come in here and I could go with a flat spot and go an eighth of an inch and uh, have it add so that it follows the curve of the wave and all, um, you know, because that wave is still there and I want it to follow that flow of that wave. Uh, eighth of an inch, let's go a little bit more. Let's go, let's go a quarter. Good enough. And I might change my wave a little bit so that uh, it's not so thin right here. Uh, either that or my overall thickness of my flag, I'm gonna go more than three quarters. And what I mean by that is on my base, if I needed to uh, on my original base and everything, I could build that up. Um, I'm gonna do it on a different level insert a new level and let's say that I give that a quarter of an inch you know to add that give it just a little bit more thickness and stuff but uh, that's how I would create that torn flag right so um, we basically took a uh, an image of torn paper. We could have drawn our own, of course, right? We could have drawn our own, but we took an image of torn paper. We traced it. We grabbed a crack, you know, one of those lines, and we used that vector. We closed it off to create a closed vector, so we could remove those stripes and everything from inside of that vector. And then from there, we within that vector, we built up a little bit of a shape uh, that uh, you know follows that curve because that curve is its own component. Uh, and then in a separate level, we built up a little bit of base just so we have a little bit of meat here, right? You know, either that or we change our curve, okay? Um, and, you know, you ask yourself, you could ask yourself, or if somebody might be asking themselves, who knows, why is it dipped down here if it's raised up here? right in the in the drawing if it's raised up here wouldn't that be a high spot why is it a low spot because my guideline comes out here it's not right at the corner here it's out here so this span is getting stretched to that point so this actual low spot right here is this low spot right here okay so if i move that contour in a little closer then it would start to kind of curve back up on that end, right? Okay, all right. Um, okay, so Jim, you had to skip out for a second, uh, but did, did, did you, that whole thing where I showed you uh, how to create that second, uh, or that, that additional program, Jim Starnes, um, 
you can watch the video again. It'll be live uh, after the class and all. You can watch it again to see anything you missed if you had to step out during that. But uh, basically, you're just creating another another setting uh, for the diamond drag bit so that the spindle doesn't turn on. The spindle's not active in that particular setting. All right, you guys and girls, uh, do we have any more questions? I'm not going to have a long class tonight. We've already been going an hour and a half. Uh, if you have any more questions, great. If not, we're going to kind of wrap it up here. Uh, and um, those uh, 4th of July files, let's see here if... Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let's go over here and go to downloads. 4th of July... Okay, so uh, in the 4th of July files, uh, the project files, um, we will have the American signs that let freedom ring, America and um, welcome, the welcome sign. Uh, there's going to be a United States flag with an eagle. Uh, the torn uh Proud to be an American will be there. That proud to be an American that we just put together will be in there um, with the torn flag. Uh, a blank torn flag, a regular full flag, um, the uh, and a wavy flag, and another torn flag. So it, with a different terror pattern. But um, yeah. And then those uh, welcome signs and stuff. So. Uh, I don't know how much it's going to be. It's not going to be too much for all that. But, uh, yeah, support the channel. Go buy some 4th of July stuff and uh, make it. Um, and everything. Uh, Bob Frail, uh, question. Did you ever make the outdoor Scrabble board? No, we talked about that last week. Uh, I've got three projects that I've got to get finished. Uh, the Scrabble board, the Beehive. Uh, someone's, uh, there's a, quite a few people looking for the files of the Beehive. And then, of course, the, um, the mirror that we did last week, the Hollywood style mirror. So those three files, uh, those are working on. And then those will be available on the digital, or the, not digital cover, the builditv.com website uh, under shop and um, uh, project files project files so they'll be available on the website uh probably within the next by next weekend and everything so i just gotta wait for some materials to come in to finish up the beehive one uh the magnets I already have the magnets they came in uh for the uh scrabble and uh so that one will be ready to go shortly as well too oh uh, let's see here Yes, all of the flags, Ronnie Probert asked, uh, can the wavy flag be done in the V-Carve? Yeah, all of the all these models and stuff can be imported into Vetric V-Carve Desktop, Pro, or Aspire. Yeah, all the files can be imported into any one of them. Desktop, Pro, or Aspire. Yep. So, 4th of July is just right around the corner. It's not too late to make some 4th of July projects. Got some flags going on there and all that cool stuff. Uh, a whole entire project pack. And you got... Uh, New torn flag with a little let freedom ring quote on there. Or uh, proud to be an American, not let freedom ring. Uh, but, uh, and for those of you that have Aspire that are wondering how to make a wavy flag, there is a video on how to make a wavy flag, but this is just kind of the quick and dirty version uh, that we did here. And we started out with our base components. Um, in our base components, we had our three models uh, we had the base, the stripes, which you can't see unless they're turned on, uh, the stars and the stripes. Okay. Uh, you don't see the stripes until the base is active. So that created our foundation of our flag. From there, we took a copy of those and put them in a new level and we added a 30 degree draft to them to create that nice little angle and everything. So those were turned off. Those are our originals intact. In level two, we created our 30 degree draft. 
<clears throat> and uh, that created that nice little angle and everything. Uh, from there, we took and removed part of that model using our little split paper here. We used it and removed that model. That's why it's missing there. Uh, we added a wave to the flag and then we added an additional base to the flag to give it a little bit more thickness and stuff. Um, and uh, all that happy jazz. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So that is uh, how we created that split flag right so looking forward to tomorrow night uh what happens tomorrow night ronnie provert tomorrow night is the 22nd if you're talking about the live event uh talking about the um new uh smart bench precision pro cnc uh the large format and affordable price cnc the live event that burl and i are doing that is thursday night at seven o'clock uh the 23rd Thursday the 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, if you're not talking about that, let me know what's happening tomorrow night. Because <laughs> I have no clue. All right. Um, let's see here. Yeah, if you like these videos, guys, uh, give a like. That helps out with the algorithm for sure. Uh, and um, hopefully you got something out of tonight. Um, besides uh, some potential files if you're interested. And... Uh, I'll make them affordable. Just go in there and, you know, I'm getting skinny, guys. I got to eat. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, listen, I enjoyed tonight. Hopefully you did too. Uh, and um, until next time, we'll see you soon. Have a good night, guys. And girls. And everybody.